Flashing mesh-tastic devices on a Mac. Rumlog NG just keeps getting better and better. And let's talk harmonics, this time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k at MRD at iCloud.com. I'd love to hear from you. This time, we've got a little bit of follow-up and a couple great questions, so let's dive right in. This first one, though, we got a question regarding Mesh-tastic, which I'm the expert on now because I've done it once. <laughs> this viewer writes, do you have any guidance to get Mesh-tastic devices flashed with a MacBook Air? I'm hoping to not need to load some Windex to this laptop. Well, my friend, you do not need to load Windex or Windblows or any other Win program because Meshtastic flashing is all done on the internet. But there's a caveat. We can't use Safari. We've got to use Chrome. So let's take a look. So here we are. We can see I am using my least favorite browser, Chrome. And we're on flasher.meshtastic.org. This is all web-based. So I'm using a, uh, what is it, the Helltech V3. So we're going to select that as my target device. Then we're going to select the firmware version. And I'm just going to pick the newest stable beta. And we're going to hit Flash. And we're going to need to scroll down, hit Continue, uh, leave the baud rate alone. Uh, and let's say I'm going to do a full erase and install and we're going to hit erase and install and then we're going to get this little thing here or we're going to need to pick our serial port. I believe I'm on number one because these are my radio and there we are. You can see stuff is happening and you're going to need to wait a few minutes so we'll go ahead and cut to the end there but doesn't look like anything's happening on the device itself but it is and uh, we can see what's going on down here. So once this is done, we'll come back. And now we can see we are done. The Meshtastic device just booted, and you can go ahead and configure the rest of it on your, I assume you're using an iPhone. And it's just that easy. So I hope that helps you, and thanks for writing in, and good luck never using a Windows computer. <laughs> Last week, we had a question about setting up multiple transceivers in Rumlog NG from JBAMI, and I showed a way to configure two, and I said in that video I couldn't figure out how to do more transceivers, but I knew there was a way. Well, would you believe that Tom, DL2RUM, the developer of Rumlog NG, watched that video, and he says, just saw your video. I like the rum log part very much. Well done. <laughs> uh, thank you. To complete the answer, there is another approach for multiple configurations. Do a complete working uh, configuration for transceiver one or transceiver one and two. Go to menu, transceiver, save, uh, set up and select slot one through 10. Type in a useful name or description and repeat steps one through three for other models. Using menu, transceiver, load, TRX, one, set up you can recall the complete configuration for one model with one mouse click so let me show you what that actually means this is freaking cool basically what this means we can use 20 different transceivers with rumlog ng how freaking cool is that so here we are in rumlog ng i only have one radio setup we just got the 7610 setup but if we look at the frequency up here and over here we can see that as i turn the vfo our frequency changes and if i want to uh, looks like there's some six meter activity going on. If I want to click that guy, my radio changes, everything changes, right? And I have that set up in settings. We've got TX1 and TX2, which last week we looked at the 7610 and the 818, and it worked great. But I couldn't figure out how to do more. Well, notice there is no menu button. The menu is what he's referring to is this top up here. If we go to transceiver... So I have the 7610 and the 818 saved as working transceivers. And if the 818 were uh, online, it would be right here. So if we go up to this transceiver button, we can see we have load transceiver one and save transceiver one. And we have load transceiver two and save transceiver two. So basically what this means is, so I'm on my 7610 right now. So if I wanna save this setting for my 7610, I just click that and select which one through 10 I want. In this case, I've already done it. And then here you name it and hit okay. 
for Transceiver 2, let's go down here, and here you can see in slot one, I've already saved it for the 818. So if we have other transceivers, we'd go back into settings, we'd have our transceivers all set up, so you have 10 transceivers set up, whatever. Transceiver 1, transceiver 2, let's say we want transceiver 1, in this case, to be a 7300, and transceiver 2 to be a Yesu FTDX 5000. Then we'd hit close. Then I'd go back over here and I'd hit save transceiver one setup and I'm gonna select the second one and I'll just name this 7300 and hit okay. And then under transceiver two, we'll select the second slot here and I'll call this just 5000, name it whatever you want, something you can remember. And now this way I have, so right now we have four different transceivers set up. So if I wanted to load the 7300, all I would have to do is hover over transceiver, hit load and select 7300. Same thing with transceiver two. Now I want the 5000. So if the 7300 and the 5000 were connected, we would see them over here. And then maybe I wanna go back to the 7610. We just hit load transceiver one, click on 7610. And theoretically in a couple seconds, we should see that pop up and there we are. And we're turning the VFO and everything works just wonderfully. How awesome is that? Tom, thank you so much again for writing amazing software. I love it. And the whole Mac world loves it and loves you as well. So there we are, 20 transceivers with one ham radio logging software. Can you do that on your Windblows machine? I think not, you might be able to, I don't know, and I don't care, cause I'm, cause I'm on Mac and we love Mac on this channel. <laughs> Lastly, we've got a question about harmonics. This viewer writes, K-Murder, are there any harmonics on the left side of the fundamental frequency when testing a radio on a tiny SA? I noticed when everyone tests a radio, the main frequency is on the left and we see the spikes for the harmonics going up the band, but no one ever shows the lower frequencies. Are transmitters dirty on the lower frequencies as well? Ryan K5TAR. Ryan, thanks for writing in. And this is a cool one. Uh, so. To answer this question, let's understand what a harmonic is, and then I'll give you some examples. So let's hop over to the internet machine. And as we can see here, harmonics are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. The fundamental frequency is known as the first harmonic and acts as the base frequency. For example, if the fundamental frequency is 100 hertz, the first harmonic would be 200 hertz, the second harmonic 300, and so on. Harmonics are generated when nonlinear elements with a circuit introduce distortion or modulation to a signal and have lower amplitude than the fundamental frequency. So basically what that means, as you can see, when we key up with the tiny SA, we see on the far left the fundamental frequency. In this case, I'm using 14652, and all those different harmonics are multiples of that. So what that turns into is if we take a look at this screenshot, we can see the fundamental 14652. A multiple of that with the number two there is 293 megahertz, and the third harmonic would be at 439 megahertz. So we can't really make lower frequencies with a harmonic, and let me illustrate this another way. Let's go over to my music room. Similarly, in music, we use harmonics for different things, whether it's to make a cool effect or even to just tune our guitars, we have harmonics of the fundamental frequency. So for example, here is an E, and a harmonic of that is if I do a harmonic on the fifth fret, that is also an E an octave higher. Same thing on the A string, but on the seventh fret, that is the same E as that. Now we can go up the fretboard to the 12th fret. That is also an E that is the same pitch as the 12th fret on the guitar. We can go all over the place, but we can never make the harmonic lower than the fundamental frequency. I can't make a harmonic lower in frequency than that. I can make it higher, but I can never make it lower. So. Hopefully that kind of helps illustrate your question a little bit better. So there you are. Now hopefully we know a little bit more about harmonics. And guys, if you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. K8 MRD at iCloud.com. Guys, my name is Mike, K8MRD. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio Tube. We'll see you next time. 73.